Retail earnings uh, took a hit this season, according to Barron's. Earnings across companies in the SPDR retail ETF declined by 31% year over year on average. Even for companies that saw growth in the recent quarter, executives are giving cautious outlooks, saying that a slowdown from the consumer could weigh on future earnings. Listen. We've seen uh, some weakness in what I'll call big ticket discretionary items. What we're seeing is the consumer making $80,000 a year is trading down. There's just a lot that we don't know. Um, the cons- we could tilt into a recession. We saw a consumer that was you know, feeling the impacts of inflation. All right, joining us now to discuss what we saw from retailers this earnings season is Corey Tarlow, Jeffrey's Vice President, Equity Research. Corey, good to see you. How would you describe the quarter in retail? Good afternoon, and thanks for having me. So I'd say that the last quarter in retail uh, is really quite simple, and it's it's that not every retailer was created equally. Uh, I think that there were very simply winners and losers. Um, Those that won were retailers that are value-oriented, have really convenient offerings and affordable prices, and frankly, skew a little bit more heavily into consumable products like food. And those that really, I think, felt the brunt of persistent inflation and a weakening consumer um, underperformed. So on the plus side, you had retailers like Walmart, BJ's, Costco, and Target do quite well. Um, And then on the negative side, you had retailers like Gap that reported yesterday evening and the results underwhelmed, or American Eagle as well, that uh, has continued to kind of underperform a little bit here. What about what we heard in terms of guidance, the outlook, because that was so important this earnings season. We saw a number of these stocks really move on what the future outlook was of these companies. How did that compare to what we've heard and what we've seen from these companies in the past? Well, I think that right now it's kind of ironic because these retailers are at a point where they can control probably the most that they've been able to control in the last three years since the onset of the pandemic. But even despite that, we actually saw some of the most conservative outlooks that we've seen in quite some time. And I think that that makes sense given what we've seen in some of the data. So revolving credit balances continue to be up at a historically high rate of about 15%. And savings rates uh, are are well below pre-pandemic levels at present. So I think the consumer's buying on credit more saving less. And as a result of that, a lot of these companies, like take Walmart as an example, calibrated their guidance very conservatively. Why? Well, it's pretty simple. Last year, they had to issue profit warnings and lower their full year outlooks. And I think that that's a narrative they're looking to flip in 2023. Corey, you mentioned some of your winners. How about losers in the quarter? Well, I talked a little bit about Gap and American Eagle, but I think very simply, it's the retailers that are more discretionary oriented, that don't have very unique catalysts to really propel them uh, throughout the remainder of this year, in spite of what we've seen in persistent inflation. So those are two where I I think that given they're predominantly mall based, they are overstored. And the the store growth for some of their higher growth segments is actually slowing, like Airy, as an example. Um, and some of the recent acquisitions that American Eagle made, even in its uh, supply chain acquisition in, in quiet logistics, is also um, likely to still going to take a while to to ramp here. So I, I think that that's one that uh, is, is likely a loser following this quarter. And, and then Gap would be another one as well. All right, Corey, it's time to have a little fun here. We want to play a game. We're going to give you two stocks and you have to pick. Some of them are both your winners. Some of them are both your underperformers who you think is the ultimate winner this past earnings season, or you can flip it and talk about the outlook here. Costco or BJ's, two of your winners, who's best positioned? Um, Great one. I I think that right now uh, I got to give it to BJ's following the, uh, their print yesterday. It was a, a really impressive fourth quarter that they had with the comps up in the high single digits Um, outlook that was, uh, also relatively strong from a, a top line standpoint, and they have a much higher mix of food versus 
uh, non-food than what Costco has. And, and they have a lot of really nice initiatives on the grocery side that should help to underpin growth ahead. All right, a tough one here, Gap or American Eagle? <laughs> um, I think American Eagle yeah. um, gives it the slight edge because I think that they have a little bit more um, that they've done on the cost side to rein costs in. Gap still has much more work to be done there, and they still have to appoint uh, a new CEO, which they uh, have yet to do. All right, I got a tough one for you here. Walmart or Target? Uh, Walmart's really gotten their act together quite nicely. Mm. They have benefited tremendously from higher income consumers trading down. They have a retail media business network that is uh, growing at a rate of 40% year over year and drives tremendously high margins. And you also have the Walmart Plus segment that continues to grow and gain members as well. So really like everything that Walmart's uh, doing at present and valuation is relatively in, in line with historical average. TJ so Maxx. we see further upside ahead. Oh, sorry, buddy. TJ Maxx versus Burlington. Who you got? I think TJ Maxx because it very simply caters to a higher income consumer and it's much cleaner of a story right now. It's a company that's been able to drive high single digit or even low double digit operating margins, whereas Burlington uh, over the last 12 months has had negative comps and underwhelming operating uh, profiles. And as a result of a lot of the elevated inventory levels that many of these companies have spoken about, that's really become a treasure for both companies. But TJ Maxx has the one with pricing power and has been able to benefit from that from a financial standpoint. Corey, we got to ask you about Nike and Lulu, two, two stocks that we debate all the time. Who's the winner? Uh, for me here, it's 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 Nike. Uh, I think Lulu might end up being uh, perhaps the, the best underperform for this year uh, with a, a margin profile that is, I think, frankly, a little bit too elevated. You have uh, markdowns on the horizon that should drive lower margins ahead. That's not baked into consensus estimates at present, a mirror acquisition that has uh, underperformed substantially and disclosure around that segment has also been curtailed. Uh, footwear, which is a lower margin segment, is expanding at Lululemon, and that should also hinder profitability ahead. And I think that a lot of the results that they, uh, or a lot of the guidance, excuse me, that they provided at their analyst day um, recently is likely to be very difficult to achieve. So Lululemon top underperform and, and much prefer Nike to Lulu. All right, Corey Tarlow from Jeffries. Great stuff. Appreciate that, my man.